Welcome to the Rush of Fear podcast, where we'll be covering Universal Orlando's premier scare event, Halloween Horror Nights, for our sister podcast, the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Today, we're going to dive into the long-awaited speculation map posted from Horror Nights Nightmares at HN Nightmares on Twitter this week. Let the mayhem begin. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Kenneth. And with me, I have Michelle. Hello, hello. And Maddie. Hi. And we are more than ready to speculate about this year's Halloween Horror Nights event. Uh, Just a few days ago, uh, Horror Nights Nightmares posted their initial speculation map on Twitter and created quite the buzz among horror fans everywhere. With the cancellation of Horror Nights last year in 2020, we're now all grasping at any news we can get our hands on as an indication that this year's event will move forward fully back to normal. And if this map is to come to fruition, I believe we are in for quite the treat. So how about we start with the scare zones? Yeah, so just briefly for those who may be new to Halloween Horror Nights, a scare zone is actually just, it's just out in the park as you're walking through the streets. Um, so it's a its a zone that you might come to where there's scare actors walking around uh, just waiting for those who aren't paying attention um, so that they can scare the bejesus out of you. It's actually personally my favorite part of HHN. I love just walking through scare zones and watching other people uh, get scared and running. It's it's a fun it's a fun time. So scare yeah. zones are just out in the streets. Houses are are things that you actually wait in line for to go through, but scare zones are, are pretty hard to avoid. So beware. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it looks like the first zone that we might be hitting upon entering the park is the 30th anniversary zone, which we kind of expected would happen on such a big anniversary, right? Um, right. So I, I think it sounds kind of fun. What do you guys think that you we might see at a 30th anniversary zone? I would assume something like that, the one that they had over in Hollywood for the 25 years of fear with like the different icons. Am I Yeah. Like... Yeah, that would be that would be my guess, because there's another zone that we're going to get to later that feels like also like a 30th anniversary thing. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So to I just think just to keep it a little differentiated, I feel like this one would maybe focus more on icons. And I think it would be the same icons that would be in the house that we're going to discuss later as well. Right. Yeah. And and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of this kind of change because there is so much focus on the anniversary stuff. I don't I would be surprised if they have like three full on features that are just about the anniversary. Or or am I wrong? Um, I I mean, they may be trying to use what they have from previous years instead of making new stuff this year. Yeah, that's and true. 25 was also a lot focused on past stuff. Like I want to I think insidious might have been the only thing in 25 that wasn't some sort of rebrand or rehash or new take on something from the past. So like everything at 25 was a throwback other than insidious. And like looking back at the 20th year, there was a, uh, a 20 years anniversary scare zone in Hollywood. There was the house that was like 20 years of fear back mm-hmm. in the parade building. So they like to, to kind of multiple do like multiple versions of like celebrating uh, past things. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's been kind of the, although you're right, I think maybe two scary zones might be more than they've ever done other than, well, no, but like I said, 25, they did all night. Yeah. Diane was back with like lots of classic characters and, they had the, yeah. the icon zone in Hollywood. So I could That's I true. could see it. Well, 25 was my first year. So I didn't really have it. That was all new for me. It wasn't <laughs> it wasn't anything rehashed. So uh, right. that was a great year to be your first year. It really was. Um, I can just imagine you walking through the park and everyone's like, Jack's back, Jack's back. And you're just like, who's Jack? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what, what? it was. Like. <laughs> hello, Jack. What are these nice people talking you. about? <laughs> but, you know, going through the Jack house, I was like, well, hello, Jack. Hello, hello. Jack. Yeah. Hello, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was a good time. That's funny. Um, but yeah, I've, I've. do you think that this would be only original icons or, or do you think we'll also get to see 
you know, like the Crypt Keeper or or kind of more broad icons like the classic monsters? Or, or do you think that they'll try to stick only to their own creations? Ooh, that's a good question. I... Because, I, I mean... <laughs> Obviously, we're this is all speculation. We don't know anything, but like yeah. uh, the assumption that this would be icons, nothing is more iconic than like you know the classic monsters. The monsters, yeah. I, I don't know. I I kind of expect them to have a good mix of like the biggest icons for sure. Right. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. I I personally think it's just gonna be the HHN icons because you do have like the Bride of Frankenstein with like everyone and their mother in that house. So true. Yeah. So I think the HHN icons house is going to match the HHN anniversary scare zone. Like, I think they're going to be like the same, at least icons, maybe not like the same, like costumes or things like that, but definitely the same, like icons, but also that's a very small space for that. Yeah. So that's also true. Yeah. Yeah. It is, but, and we don't know what anything is going to look like because of COVID. I can, I can pretty much guarantee that whatever they do with the icons, they're going to put them up on little stages like oh, they did for Chance. Yeah, everything is going to be stages, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Which is a bummer because it was kind of fun taking pictures with, with um, some of these icons in the past, but I guess did, these are going to be socially distanced pictures. This did, <laughs> did either of you go to Hello Scream this uh, last year? No, no. I'm really curious. I didn't go either, but I know that they did only scare zones, no houses. And we did at Universal only did um, houses, only no houses, houses, no, no scare, scare zones. zones. So I'm wondering if like each park is going to look at what the other did and kind of learn from how they did it and uh, take some some notes and apply what they what they learned. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure they will. But there's, you know, things have changed a lot in the past year. Yeah. Um, and, and things are really starting to slowly open back up. I, I hope that by September, things will look a lot more normal. I think we can expect to still see masks, of course. But um, oh, yeah, for sure. As far as like all of the insane, I hate to say insane because I'm going to get reamed for that, I'm sure. But um, like the plexiglass separations and, and the no scare zones thing. I hope that all of that is able to be gone by September. Yeah. Well, Fingers yeah. Crossed. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. Yep. So moving clockwise around the park, we're going to end up in like the New York area. Um, and this is so far, it's an unnamed original scare zone. So, you know, we obviously don't know much about that right now. Um, once more things get announced, we will obviously let you know. Um, or if like another speculation map comes out and they kind of have an idea of the original scare zone, you know, We'll let you know about that as well. But yeah, so next we're going to make our way over to San Francisco. And that's where we hit the uh, Creep Show scare zone. And now I had no idea what Creep Show was like pre HHN 28 when I just kind of like researched the heck out of Horror Nights in general. Um, but in case you listener don't know what it is, I will let you know. Uh, So Creepshow was a 1982 American horror comedy anthology film, which was created, well, it was written by Stephen King. And this actually was his like screenwriting debut, which is pretty cool. So the film consisted of five short stories. Um, There was Father's Day, The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill, Something to Tide You Over, The Crate, and They're Creeping Up on You. Um, Two of these stories were adapted from... King's like short stories with the film bookend by prologue and epilogue scenes featuring a young boy named Billy played by King's son, um, who is punished by his abusive father for reading horror comics. There's a character too. Like he's, or am I wrong? Am I, am I thinking of something else? No, you're right. There's like a guy. He's like a a mascot looking character. It's the the guy. He's not a guy. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it says here that the movie is inspired by, or it's an homage to old like horror comics from the fifties, such as Tales from the Crypt, among others. Which makes a lot of sense because the crypt, the the creep show little character looks a lot like the Crypt Keeper from Tales. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. Tales yeah. from the Crypt. Yeah, they yeah. look so very is, similar. Yeah. So this is going to be like our our kind of light scare zone. You know, our our fun scare zone, right? 
I can see this kind of being like the revenge of Chucky. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Maybe. I mean, the movie is, it it is a horror comedy anthology, but I mean. So maybe more like Trick or Treat. There are things in it that are still kind of scary you know like it's not it's not straight up lightheartedness it's not going to be killer clowns you know it's <laughs> like there's still some scary images and and characters in there i've not seen uh most of what creep show is i've seen the first movie i haven't seen the show on shutter um and i'm wondering if if this will be based just on the first movie or if it's based on all the movies or based on the show um that we don't know but from what it looks like, it is it is still a very much in like the horror, uh, you know, umbrella the genre. Sure. Uh, well, with it yeah. with it consisting of different stories like that, I could see where it would make for a good scare zone, like Maddie said, where like the the Chucky scare zone, where it had different again different stages, which is great for social distancing, right? So I could see where they would be able to set up different stages based on the different stories that are in the anthology. So. I, it, it makes sense to me as as a scare zone for sure. Yeah, definitely. Anthology stuff is always good for for this kind of thing when you have, especially now if they do end up using the TV show, like that opens up so much more potential for characters and costumes and scenes that they can use and, and bring into the zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just like multiplies it like a hundredfold. Yeah, for sure. Um, but neither of you have seen creep show. No, I'm going to have to watch it though. Yeah. It's pretty fun. I got to say it's pretty fun. I didn't find, I don't find it very scary other than I think the only one that I was kind of like, I don't like that was the, (laughs) they're creeping up on you, which is like about a guy who hates cockroaches and bugs. Oh, and he's basically, uh, his apartment is being overrun by cockroaches (gasps) and like, I nope, don't even nope, really nope. have a problem with cockroaches and there's so many of them in it that I was like, oh no, I don't like that. Oh my God, but that would be so awesome for HHN. Oh yeah. And well, and they did a house of creep show in in Hollywood at Horror Nights 20 or not 29, uh, you know, 2019. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they did a, a couple of rooms based on that section with the cockroaches and yeesh. People said that house was really good though. Yeah, because listen, fear is not all about gore. There are so many things that there are so many different ways to play on people's fear and creepy crawly things is definitely one of those. So that I can see that happening. I have like goosebumps. I hate it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. This next one sounds like my favorite, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go across the lagoon to Central Park where we will experience Terra Cruentis. So a little backstory on this. Terra Cruentis was a land ruled by the Terra Queen and was the concept for HHN 15 back in 2005, which was the first year that I went to. So I do remember this. From hauntvault.com, they summarize it as located at Universal Orlando's Islands of Adventure and a portion of Universal Studios Florida, 2005 proved to be a complicated storyline year for those following the event. General marketing for the event followed Elsa Strict, also known as the Storyteller, As the event icon, this was her introduction, a deranged, almost grandmother type reading stories to her bound victims before showing us how they would ultimately meet their end. Fans were amped to have another event icon that would be prominent in the event. However, upon visiting the event and supplement updates on the interactive website, you learned that the storyteller was telling a deeply enriched backstory that every one of the event's haunted houses, scare zones, and shows were intermingled into. Uh, the storyteller debuted the tale of Terra Cruentis, where its harsh ruler, the Terra Queen, rode her right out of hell winged motorcycle and tortured guests uh, during her Terra Throne show, where her subjects would murder and rule all the land. Uh, Islands of Adventure was broken into various Terra Cruentis realms. There was North Hollow, Terra Gate, Iron Bone Gorge, South Hollow, Garwood Forest, and Dragon Forge. That is so much information. Oh my God, that's, <laughs> but it sounds incredible. It was really, really cool. Um, so you would walk into IOA that year and uh, there were like, it was very much looked like uh, people wearing like armor made of bones 
and like very bat inspired. I remember her motorcycle with the wings. It was very cool looking. I had no idea what anything was. And, um, yeah, so that was your first year. So it was all it was crazy all new to you. Yeah. But <laughs> just the idea of literally every single aspect of the event intertwining like that sounds incredible. And I love the idea of having a, a badass female uh, villain. You know, I, yes. I love that concept. So that sounds awesome. She was awesome. She was the one that said, in 15 years, I'll be back, right? Yes. Okay. On the last night of Horror Nights that year, uh, at the end of her last show, she said that she would return in 15 years, which would have been last year. Oh, that would have and been perfect. So, but she will be back this year. I'm so glad that they're following up on that promise. Yeah. Um, honestly, something that without the internet, probably most people would have forgotten and no, like <laughs> nobody would have noticed that like, hey, that didn't happen. Yeah. But uh, no, they're doing it. That's so like cool. Last year, apparently. <laughs> yeah, Apparently. Last year didn't count though. Last year was like, it was like we had kind we had the two houses, well three houses I guess if you count but not the really. But yeah, it was like, it was a I'm trying to think of the right word, just kind of like a pause. It was an intermission year. Sure. <laughs> well, maybe she meant 15 years of Events. the event, not of necessarily event. 15 chronological <laughs> years. Exactly. We're gonna go yeah. with that. Exactly. She's, well, <laughs> if you. If you find video, she actually said, I will be back in 15 years unless there's a global pandemic, in which case it'll be 16 <laughs> years, but 15 events. <laughs> hey, I almost believed you there for a second. I know, <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really gullible in case people can't tell. <laughs> That's funny. I'm excited about that, though. I can't wait yeah. to experience it. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm glad. Also, I think Central Park's a really good location for that just because it was very very much of that vibe of the things that normally go in Central Park. Like, I think it'll fit right in right there. Yeah. Um, I awesome. I kind of wish they gave her a bigger area because I mean, she was right at the end of port of entry where you fork to the left or right. Like that was where that show was. Oh. Um, so it was a very big wide open area. And um, I feel like she's going to be kind of cramped in in Central Park, but I think it's still yeah. a good fit, uh, aesthetically speaking. Cool. They must have something really big coming into the original scare zone in New York if they're not putting her there. You right, know, I, yeah. I think the last the last speculation maps from last year had Tara Cruentis in New York. In New York, I want to say. So I can only um, imagine what is going to be coming into New York if they're going to use that entire area. The biggest it's be big, scare zone yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Because to not put her there, but also not to put the, like, what I'm going to talk about next or um, the horror icons one in there. It's just, like, I, I can't even imagine what it's going to be. I want to well, know. We'll stay tuned. I know. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the last scare zone, the only one we have left. It's in Hollywood, um, and this one is going to be the best of scare zone mashup. So anything, I think any scare zone you could possibly think of um, could potentially be in here. And now yeah. I, I don't know if it's going to be like, I don't know. I In my head, I picture it like, like one set piece from each scare zone that they decide to put in and then like four to five or maybe five to six characters from that scare zone, just kind of running amok, like all mixed and matched together. Yeah. That's a really big area too. So are they sure. going to do it that where it like all mixes or is it going to be like gradual where you move from scare zone to scare zone or like chronological order, like at the front of, Hollywood Ooh. you have like a scare zone from early on and then you move down to scare zones like maybe vamp 55 or trick-or-treat twisted traditions ones like that that are closer to HHN 30 I don't know yeah I don't know they have a lot to pull from though I mean 30 years of scare zones now it's a lot yeah looking through it there were like the first five or six years, there was only one scare zone and it was the same scare zone every year. So like, and there are some years where things are like, like legions of horror, which I, 
I think pulling from Legions of Horror would be cool. I know that wasn't everyone's like favorite, but I, I did like the costuming and storyline of that one. Um, but two that I personally would love to see just for selfish reasons, because I think they're absolutely ridiculous are <laughs> <laughs> the cheeks and foons from the islands of adventure. And then the JP extinction one where they cross dinosaurs and humans. Oh, yeah. like, yes. <laughs> God, yeah. I didn't know that existed. That would be amazing. It was you in Jurassic park. <laughs> you got to watch that travel channel special, Michelle. Yes. It's, it's all in there. Okay. It's- making a note. Travel <laughs> yeah. channel. Do you know about the cheeks and foons one though? No. <laughs> okay. So cheeks and, okay. It was in Dr. Seuss because they couldn't do anything relating or to I, Dr. I, Seuss at all. I think it was in, I think it was in uh, Toon Lagoon. Actually. Oh, was it in Toon Lagoon? Yeah. Okay. So it was, they like filled the entire area with foam, like actual foam that you had to like wade through. And then there were these weird kind of like, if you ever saw um, Spy Kids 2, uh-huh. <laughs> and there was like that, the bad guy who would like draw the creepy characters and then turn the parents into the creepy characters. Yes. And they had that TV show, yeah. kind of like that. That's what they looked yeah. like. They were like round and bouncy. And they would like bounce in and out of the foam. They had these weird faces. That sounds really cool too. Yes. <laughs> that one. Yeah, that was, uh, they had kind of those, I don't know what they're called, but they're like bouncy shoes that are like a, yeah. like almost moon like a pogo shoes. stick moon shoe. shoes. Those moon shoes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you <laughs> see like, like people in the parades at Disney's are on them sometimes. Yeah. Um, they're on those things in like these big, honestly, they kind of look like a version of Killer Clowns mixed with Floops Fooglies from Spy Kids. <laughs> and- oh, I, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, they were in, in Toon Lagoon as like a, you know, I think it was designed as kind of like all right if you need a break from the scares this one's a little bit more silly a more little bit more fun. fun yeah and um it's like a little big it's like a big foam party that uh, sounds crazy however i don't see them making us wade through everybody's well, no. like touched foam oh, in, I know. post-pandemic year but I, I would love to see it at some point point. <laughs> maybe at least like the characters i think would be yeah cool. i would love to see like a couple of them walking around yeah yeah, a few oh others that I had listed. Um, Saws and Steam, I think, was one that I hear a lot of people talk about. Um, the Scary Tales Steampunk. Yes, I love Scary oh, Tales. Love I would it. Love to, oh, I love those costumes. I think Face Off would be really cool. I had a friend who was in Face Off, and he always talks about how fun, like how much fun he had in that one. Um, obviously, Vamp 55. If Vamp 55 comes back, I know two people personally that are going to be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be upset if it does come back. If it doesn't come back, it doesn't come back. <laughs> yeah. All right. Fine. I'll suit back up. <laughs> I really like psychotherapy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. That's nostalgia for me too. That was one of my first year, or that was my first year, and those people scared the crap out of me so many times. So that was a fun one for me. That yeah. that zone had such a good energy and like vibe just like in the air of of that yes. halloween party like that halloween street party it, mm-hmm. it felt real like it felt like a real halloween party that you yeah. were at in like the downtown area of shady brook you know and then yeah, yeah it was it was fantastic that zone was well, fantastic. and the, the costumes really blended with the crowds really well i can't tell yes. you how many times somebody was walking next to me and i didn't realize it was a scare actor and then they they would yeah. get me right well, that was like the same with like purge had that kind of same effect yes. and then the oh, zombie yeah. land also had that same effect i know from experience that was the best like in normal clothes walking next to someone and then just like turning and then being like oh my god yes <laughs> my goodness you know the funniest thing is when i was in fan 55 dressed in like full football pads sometimes i would scare someone and they'd be like oh my god i didn't realize that you were scared. yes like a scary person i'm like you thought i'm just a guy who came dressed in like football uniform <laughs> with like pads and a helmet i like, mean okay. why not <laughs> why not, why not? <laughs> uh, it's believable <laughs> goodness uh what else do you have michelle any any that you want to see come back um i know this won't come back but a chance in hell just because i'm obsessed with chance like she's my next tattoo 
like I oh. love her that much. Um, <laughs> but I know it won't come back because it wasn't everybody's favorite. It's not everybody's cup of tea. But well, I and love also her. those. I mean, yeah. that was kind of a sequel to Shady Brook. Like all of those characters were Shady Brook inmates yeah. and patients who were escaped and like worshiping Chance. Yeah. So. And it's she was kind of, funny as hell. Oh my god, the joke! <laughs> I, like, I would just stand there and talk to her. I don't. I can't tell you how many times. And her jokes were hilarious. So that was I that mean, was I fun for me. I definitely think we're going to see her in the house and the scare zone for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. she'll be around. Yeah, like her and Jack. Oh god, yeah. they're yes. they're a pair. They're a package deal. Oh, um, I can't wait. Personally, I would love to see Invasion come back. I know not everybody loved Invasion, <laughs> but I. When, when they announced what the scare zones were for that year, and I knew I was going to be a coordinator for a scare zone. Um, when I saw the Invasion logo come up, I was like, I hope to God that's the one that I'm in. And sure enough, it was. I, I awesome. love that. I love that campy uh, like vibe. I love like horror comedy. I'm a big comedy person in general. So like anytime mm-hmm. that you get to have a little bit of like, that dark comedy, like, you know, morbid sense of humor with horror nights. That's always my favorite stuff. Um, yeah. Again, uh, what's the one? Um, uh, Slaughter Cinema was like walking through my own brain. Like was like, that's what the house felt like to me. I was like, this is just, this is everything made for me. That was um, an amazing house. And that's how Invasion kind of felt too. I was like, this is perfect for me. Uh, yeah. So I would love to see like one or two of those aliens walking around. And I don't know how it would work with the IP, but I just want to see a killer clown again. Yes. I want to see. <laughs> and Sam, maybe Sam from Trick or Treat. Like, oh I, yeah, I just, for sure. I would love to see some of those guys back. Uh, There's so many good things. I don't know how yeah. creative is going to choose. Yeah. Well, yeah. here's the thing is like, so talk, earlier when we were talking about like, how would this zone be organized um, for like this same area in, in HHN 20, uh, they were going with kind of a, uh, like they've opened the warehouse of storage of past horror night stuff and everything inside. It was kind of like a night at the museum thing where like all of the props and and costumes and everything has come to life and they're back and they're attacking. Oh, that's um, sick. That yes, was kind of the, the the concept for HHN 20 with fear. Uh, so the scare zone f- kind of looked like a warehouse. They like kind of made it up to look like an outdoor warehouse with like open crates and stuff. And then you just had like random characters from the past 20 years just roaming around like with no rhyme or reason like there was no organization to who was where they were just all over the place well Um, and if with that concept i wonder if they could change it up every night or every week or something like that so that oh yeah you don't always experience the same characters when you walk through the the, through the zone or have it kind of be like the all-night die-in where you have like let's say HHN one to like HHN 15 in one cast and then HHN 16 to like 22 in another cast and then, you know, so on. And so it's like different. Every time you walk through that night, you're going to see different people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like the color cast and then the not color cast of the um, all night die in. Right. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, as long, <laughs> my only thing, as long as there are no walking dead zombies in that <laughs> scare zone, <laughs> I will be so happy. <laughs> Do you, they, is it because you don't like zombies or because you're just sick of them? I just, no more walking dead. Okay. I, I am in that camp. Like I am in that horror nights. I never experienced any of them, but <laughs> <laughs> I just think that, bringing that back like we already have a lot of discussion good and bad going on about two houses coming back this year i think the horror nights community will explode if it's another walking if we have walking dead come back yeah yeah and i'm fine with that too just because i i literally hate zombies like they terrify me i have a stupid (sighs) and a totally stupid fear of zombies um so i'm fine (laughs) with that we also like I, haven't had a z we haven't had a year without zombies in the event in the past like what seven yeah true we had zombie land we had uh, ah. um dead exposure yeah we had what was in a lot of zombies yeah we have had zombies for a while I, i'll say i'll say this i don't necessarily want walking dead to come back but i do think for a 30th anniversary it it has its place 
You know, like Walking yeah. Dead is to Horror Nights what Harry Potter is to Universal Orlando Resort in general. Like without <laughs> without without Walking Dead, Horror Nights wouldn't have grown as big and as quickly as it has. Um, so I think that there is like a, an amount of respect that has to be has to be paid to Walking Dead just That's for that. Fair. I um, guess. But how, did he however, really just compare Harry Potter to Walking Dead? <laughs> I mean, I may have to kick him out of the podcast for that. Obviously, hey, yes. I'm hosting today. <laughs> We're playing by my rules. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh God, my episode's going to be a mess. Then <laughs> I'm not. Obviously, I'm not comparing them on quality, but just on gotcha. on the uh, on the yeah. impact that they had overall for the growth of the. Yeah. Of yeah. the event or the park, but um, it does mean that we would have to get the licensing back. Sure, true. So why not? Well, yeah, why bother? Leave them out, <laughs> <laughs> right? You need Here's to save what they money could do. this year. You need to save money this year. No more walking. We could, that IP. I mean, we could definitely pull purge in. I know we had what two, three years of purge, right? Uh, we've had four four years where the purge was represented. Oh, oh, I guess yeah. with the houses, yeah. Yeah, two two in the sc- yeah, two in the streets, two in the houses, or mo- no, three in the houses. Oh yeah, because that one year where it was supposed to be something else, but then they pulled purge. Yeah, right? there was yeah. yeah in twenty five, scream became the purge. In yeah. twenty twenty yeah. seven, it was in the first horrors of Blumhouse, and then the next year, the first purge was the first time that the purge was in a house where it was always was, supposed to yeah. be the purge. Yeah. Um, Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Okay, okay. Let's move on to the main event. We've we've had enough of this. Uh, hold on. No, 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 no. Backpedaling just a second. The way that Walking Dead can be represented <laughs> in this zone have like the legs of a zombie trapped under a dead horse, and every now and then people come up and beat up the dead horse. And that's how you do it. Oh <laughs> my! Um, God. You're done. You're cut off. <laughs> And Maddie, take over. Uh, well, let's <laughs> move on to the main event. Shine. <laughs> <laughs> the house is the house is yes. the main event. The reason we're here, the thing we'll wait in line for. Um, starting back at the front of the park and working our way around clockwise, uh, we're going to go to the Music Plaza stage where the entrance to the Bride of Frankenstein lives Woo-hoo! will allegedly be. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's safe to say that, that that's I- coming back. Yeah, I hope so. I sure do hope so. That house I mean, was. Yeah, beautiful. we so talked good. about it in our last episode, and yeah, um, it would be really stupid of them to take it out. Any of the houses that they already had up for last year would be stupid of them because you know, with finances being a little bit shaky after the pandemic and everything, they got to be smart. And that one was an amazing house, so I right. hear so. And you have to think that probably. I don't know what percentage of the typical horror nights audience do you think actually got to see them last year? Like, not a, a lot, le- no. like less than a quarter, probably. Oh, yeah. Like, not you know, no one was really traveling. So yeah, like they have to leave it there just so that everybody who wants to see it can get to see it. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And they agreed. deserve to see it. It was so good. I can't wait. Well, and it also wouldn't be HHN without chainsaws. We all know this. So, mm-hmm. um, up next in the Jimmy or behind the Jimmy Fallon building, we've got da, 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 the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Good old Leatherface will grace us with his presence yet again. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, this is a recurring house. It was uh, featured as t- Texas Chainsaw Massacre Flesh Wounds in 2007 and then again at um, HHN 26. Um, back in 2016. So we've seen this uh-huh. a little bit before. It's not mm-hmm. ever my favorite house, although it's a good time, you know, if you like loud mm-hmm. chainsaws in your ears for a good <laughs> solid five minutes. <laughs> it's all good. Um, but yeah, did you guys like this one in the past? I've never yes. gone through it. You I loved, right. loved both of the Texas Chainsaw houses. Uh, the one in 2007, uh, the finale of that house is one of like, you know, that like when you remember a moment that you were scared that you could like feel it in your whole body, that is how I felt during the finale of flesh wounds in 2007. Uh, the finale of that house had you outside, um, and they had like sheets on clotheslines and there were like three clotheslines between you and the exit and the sheets were placed so that you couldn't see oh from from the start to the end um without walking around the sheets and they i think each sheet had a leather face or someone with a chainsaw behind it and so like 
but just like running, sprinting out of there. My heart was racing so fast. That is one of the best memories I have of early Horror Nights uh, for me, like falling in love with the event. That year specifically like changed my whole outlook on on Horror Nights and horror in general. That um, sounds terrifying. And 20, oh, it was. 2016, I didn't do it in 27, or 2007, of course, but in 2016, that is also one of my best memories or scariest memories, I should say. I think that was the biggest scare I've ever gotten at HHN ever because – as I was walking out of the house, you know, you you have that sigh of relief, like, oh, okay, I made it, I'm good. And you're all like, you're with your friends and you're laughing and everything. And then all of a sudden, they jump out at you. Like, and you're not even in the house anymore. I was in the back, totally, totally in the exit. And two leather faces in, with chainsaws jumped out from behind a random wall and scared. <laughs> I, I literally think I peed my pants. And we <laughs> took off running because we our guard was completely down at that point, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Scared me to death. So that's awesome. Good job, I, guys. It was awesome. That house, if you timed it right, that, that was a house that was definitely very reliant on timing. But if you timed it right, you got some of the best, like, sequence of, of, uh, events that I've ever seen in a house. Like that spark wall. Do you remember the spark wall? Yes, it was that, it was a good house. That was so cool. Like the moment where he opens that door, um like that classic image from the movie, he opens the door and like grabs somebody and takes them inside. Mm-hmm. It was so good. I loved that house. I, there were like there were nights where I would do that house like two or three times in a row. Um It was just so loud. Oh my gosh, like I had yeah. to pretty much hold my ears <laughs> the whole time that's that was my biggest memory of that was it being so loud but then oh my god those two characters got me so good <laughs> my question here is how they'll how they'll differentiate it from the other years because in 2007 it was based on the remake of texas chainsaw massacre which was mm-hmm. i think pretty new at the time and in 2016 it was based on the original movie so i'm wondering if this will be based on maybe texas chainsaw 2 or if it's based more generally on like the entire franchise and feature scenes from everything, um, that'll be interesting f- to see yeah. if this house is really is really coming. I have a feeling with it being an anniversary year that it's just going to be kind of like an in general Texas Chainsaw Massacre leather yeah. face, yeah, chainsaw gory house. I it's interesting okay that. though that they pulled Texas Chainsaw Massacre out of all of the other like horror movies that they have done, like Freddy, Jason. Um, Michael, like all of that, they were like, huh, you know what? Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's the one we're going to bring back. Like, it's just, I don't know. Like, why not have like all of them in the same house and have it be like a, what's the word I'm looking for? A mashup. Yeah. Like a mashup of like your favorite, um, like actual horror film icons as opposed yeah. to like HHN icons, you know? Right. Kind of like do the the all night die in scare zone as a house and yeah, bring back exactly. all like a lot of iconic classic movie characters. Bring back Reagan from The Exorcist. Bring back you know oh. all these houses that they've done in the past few years where they've been able to get like huge IPs. Kind yeah. of mash those all up. I could I could get into that. Yeah, it's just interesting yeah. that it's Texas Chainsaw Massacre out of all the ones that they could have possibly chosen. Well, it could have to do with licensing as well. Mm. And funding, yeah. you know, is there if, a new if, movie coming out? I don't know. I don't know either. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> Maybe question. something Horror Nights knows that we don't <laughs> in the general public. <laughs> I'm going to do a quick, uh, quick search right here. But while I am looking at that, Maddie, can you tell us about the next yes, house? Yes, of course I can. So, of course, fan favorite from last year, Revenge of the Tooth Fairy um, is apparently, we don't know, going to return. Um, this was a good house. It was. I Personally, I liked Bride of Frankenstein better, um, but I am happy that Tooth Fairy is coming back because I know a lot of people really, really loved it. And I would love to see like the general, like not just the general public that came to the houses, but I'd love to see everyone else's reaction. Yeah. um, I would like to try it to it. Yeah. And I'd love to go through it. Hopefully if everything is going well and we can be safe with it without the plexiglass and the shower curtains and like how it was originally supposed to be done, because I think that was my issue with it. Like, I don't think that Bride of Frankenstein really, um, 
suffered that much with the plexiglass because it was a lot more show scenes than it was like in your face scaring. But I think this one definitely had like it without all of that, it would be so much better. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys to see it. Well, Kenneth, you already saw it, but Michelle. Yeah, I'm excited for Michelle to see it. I like the tooth. I like the scary tooth fairy concept. So yeah, I, mm-hmm. I could have. I, I would have been okay without it too. But um, yeah. But I'm okay with it coming back for sure. But it's like not the sc- like when I first heard like Revenge of the Tooth Fairy. I in my head I was picturing like f- like actual fairy fairies. You know, like when you picture the tooth fairy. Yeah. She's like a fairy with wings and like probably glitter on her face. Like I was <laughs> yeah. picturing like Tinkerbell. Yeah, I was picturing like like just not zombified, but like scary fang teeth, like fairy stealing your teeth, like that kind of yeah. stuff. But this was such an interesting take on like the anthology of the Tooth Fairy. I think that's the thing that I liked the most about it. I mean, if this is what the tooth fairy really looks like, then kids need to stop putting their pi- their teeth under their pillows for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, no. That the, you have to put your teeth under the pillows. That's why that they all come at him. Yeah, he doesn't want to give up his teeth, and the, so the tooth fairies uh, attack. Like everyone in his family. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <good> Lord. <laughs> it's yeah. it's interesting. It's definitely um, it's a house. It was good though. <laughs> it's a house. It's a house. Um, yeah. So <laughs> it, right. It, yeah, it, it definitely wasn't what I was picturing. Also, just oh, yeah. quickly, there is no there. It does not seem to be any upcoming Texas Chainsaw movie in the hmm. works. Okay, interesting. Uh, cool. So moving on to the next house, right next door. Um, it's going to be the HHN Icons Captured House. We kind of talked a little bit about it earlier when we were discussing that opening scare zone. Right. Um, but you know, going to list off all the possible icons that we could potentially have in this house i didn't think that there were this many but there are <laughs> yeah some of these i don't know but uh, Kenneth yeah might. yeah so obviously you start with the crypt keeper from way back when then you have the all famous jack the clown oh yeah we'll um, see him for sure oh yeah his less well-known brother eddie who that was the year that was it was like we were gonna have eddie but then we like weren't gonna have eddie so eddie which is jack's brother then we have the caretaker uh, my personal favorite, the director. I love him. I never got to see him, but I love him. Um, <laughs> obviously, the terror queen. We have the storyteller. We have Bloody Mary. We have the usher. Um, we have fear, which I don't personally remember that one from my research, but I will definitely do it again. Uh, we I have him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so he exists. <laughs> okay. um, we have Lady Luck. We which have- sounds cool. I think I would like to to meet Lady Luck. Yeah, that was that was that scare zone where you were. It was like the Seven Deadly Sins, right? Um, no, that was. I think it was the same year, but she was not part of that zone. Oh, uh, Lady Luck. Her she had like a tiny mini zone in Sting Alley. Um. Oh. But yeah, Seven was Seven was a separate thing, gotcha. which was also really cool, but not the same. Okay. Um, I'm going to mess up saying this next one. So if anyone wants to take it over. The iniquitous. Is that right? That's what I would have said. Okay. Iniquitous. Okay. Um, and then of course you have chance. Yes. Which we will see chance. We'll see chance and Jack the clown for sure. Yeah. I think, I think we'll see most of these. We probably won't see bloody Mary. Apparently the name bloody Mary is copyrighted and owned by someone. And so that's why she's never really come back um, in all of the different like retrospective years. Okay. Uh, they like had to license her for that one year and then they didn't, they, they haven't used her again since. That makes but sense. I think Bloody Mary might not come back. Lady Luck, she'll probably be there, but she was, she wasn't even really a full icon. She was kind of a lesser, kind of like bone in 27. Like he wasn't <laughs> officially the icon, but he kind of acted as such. Yeah. 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 Um, the iniquitous, I would even struggle to consider them. I was icon. just reading. Okay, let me because I in all of the YouTube videos that I watched, which is a lot of YouTube videos, I never heard <laughs> anyone. Okay, so under the HHN Legacy website in the iniquitous, it says rooted in evil. These are the patrons of death. 
and were the first to rise from the cemetery. They summoned the dark legions of horror at HHN 22 to join them in carnage as they feasted among the living. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I think that the legions of horror were the roaming scare zone hordes. That was a year that there were no uh, like defined scare zones. There were, there were multiple roaming legions of horror who would travel around the park. So you never knew where you were going to find characters in the street. Right. That's kind of cool. Um, uh, Apparently, I think that was the one year that I was, that was not able to go to horror nights. Um, Mm. But from what I've heard, it was a better idea in concept than in practice, because if you were moving at the same pace as the legions, then you might be stuck in between hordes and never get to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So like, you know, it, that was kind of a hit or miss thing, but it's a really cool idea that I think could work with a a little bit more um, tinkering. Yeah. I think we're obviously going to see our big ones. Like we're going to see Jack, Eddie, caretaker, director, uh, storyteller, usher, uh, chance, Potentially yeah. like a little bit of Lady Luck. Just she's the one in the yellow or the green dress with the red hair. Yeah. Um and then You know who's missing from this list is Cindy. She was a concept of an icon, but she never really became right. an icon. Well similar similar to Eddie. Yeah. Because yeah. Eddie Eddie was supposed to be the main event icon in two thousand one. For yeah. Uh, and then nine eleven happened and they mm-hmm. decided to tone down the event, make it less violent. Yeah. And intense. And so they just brought Jack back again. Caretaker and Cindy are a similar thing where Cindy was supposed to be the icon and she was a little girl. Um, and then I guess there were a string of uh, like child abductions. Yeah. yeah like child that abductions. Year. And so they decided not to have a little girl be the icon. And so the caretaker is actually Cindy's father. Yes. And they went with him instead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she she was a part of the either 20 or 25 um like icons scare zone right she yeah she's been featured a bunch of times like she was in the 25 uh scare zone i think she had a chainsaw actually and <laughs> she was also in the uh, 25 years of monsters and mayhem house okay in the in the caretakers area of that house so she's okay. she's been around she's she is a a uh, character that you know hardcore horror nights uh, fans are aware of yeah. and are fans of because she was like just like Eddie they had already released like marketing with her on it just like they had with Eddie and so obviously people knew about her right. and like her story so like when they pulled them they still kept them as part of the like HHN like history you know I think she even had her own house. I, there was a house called the Orphanage that was in the Jaws queue that I want to say was Cindy's house. Probably, yeah. Well, it's kind of interesting that we're talking about this because I kind of think we might see more of the caretaker and and Cindy in this next house. Oh that, yeah, that we're yeah. coming up to. Yep. Sure. Let's get to it then. Okay. Um. So working our way to the back of the park at the MIB tent, we have the Welcome to Scary Horror in the Heartland house. Um, So Cary, Ohio is a town that you may have seen referenced a lot throughout the years at Horror Nights. It was introduced back in 2008 as part of the caretaker's backstory and has been featured many times since. So yeah, a lot of original Horror Nights stories take place in Cary, Ohio, which is actually the hometown of, uh, I want to say Laura Sauls or... or Yeah, it's it's one of the creative um, people that actually were... Yeah, the, at the beginning of, of Halloween Horror Nights, but I couldn't find the actual name. Yeah, I think it's Laura's hometown. Um, and uh, Shady Brook is in Cary, I want to say. Uh, the drive-in that Slaughter Cinema takes place at is in Cary. Like, almost everything yeah. is in Cary. Yeah. yeah. Twisted Traditions was also Cary, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. So it's probably going to be a mashup of maybe a lot of things that we've seen, but with it being literally like the caretaker's backstory, I have a feeling we'll see a pretty big section in there with the caretaker and probably Cindy. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say 2008 was, wait, that was, that was Bloody Mary's year. What was the caretaker doing there? 
I'm not sure. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this I feel like this is also going to be like a mashup similar to the the mashup of Best of Horror Nights Zone. Like this is going to be a mashup of some of the best original Horror Nights stories. Yeah. Um with the carry through line kind of being the excuse for getting them all in the same house. Ooh, does that mean we're going to get to experience Slaughter Cinema again? Oh. May- maybe. I will cry. Woof, woof, woof. Maybe. I want to see kids again. Oh, she, I yes. See- <laughs> oh, there's, I loved everything in that house. It was so good. Like, it was so good. All those fake trailers that they played in the screen in the entrance. Oh, so. Were, oh, I want man. a DVD of all of those. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that there's a lot to say about this house. I mean, um, if, if, if we do get it, I think it's just going to be, you know, a lot like 25 years of Monsters and Mayhem, but I think this year yeah. with the with the icons having a house and the carry you know stuff having its own house they kind of can separate it out and give each one more of a spotlight rather right. than putting everything in one house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of think that this house if it comes to fruition will be one of my favorites. Oh yeah. I, just, I have a feeling. Yep. Me too. Yeah. So moving on, on to the other side of Men in Black, um, we come to a house called The Wicked Growth, Realm of the Pumpkin. Uh, yeah, so we've we've had a pretty big history of the pumpkin at HHN, of course. That's a it's a it's something that you see associated with Halloween all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, particularly at HHN, we've seen the Twisted Tradition scare zone, which was amazing. Um, they've introduced the pumpkin head characters and decor. Uh, multiple times throughout um, the past 20 years. So they could go lots of places with this. Um, I'm not quite sure what to expect, though, that would make it super scary. Do you have any more insight, Kenneth, with you having a little bit more of HHN under your belt? Um, The main thing I think of is that pumpkin head uh, chainsaw character that I love the look of uh he has like a jack-o'-lantern head um with a really stylized cartoony face that is just perfect to me um but other than that i have a feeling that this is gonna kind of be a uh, twisted tradition kind of getting the trick or treatment which is what they call when a house goes trick from a zone treatment in- Oh yeah, <laughs> that was good. oh i love it that's when a house bec- <laughs> when a street becomes a house uh so I kind of see it possibly being something like that because Twisted Tradition had clearly a lot of story baked into it that we didn't really get to take in as much unless you actually went up and talked to the characters mm-hmm. who were out there in front of that church looking building. Um, so I think that they obviously had a lot in mind with that zone and so I could see this being them taking that idea and actually getting to tell a narrative story with a beginning, middle, and end that you can take in rather than just like walking through a general experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was the name of the house? Was it last year or the year before with the overgrowth? You know the, what I'm talking about? Oh, the plants? Oh, yeah. Um, oh. Seeds of Extinction. Oh, yes. So good. Yeah, so I th- I can picture it kind of being something like that as well incorporated where, you know, you have all of the – because it says uh, the wicked growth. So I think that we might see a bunch of that kind of uh, – Sure. The vines and the plants kind of um, taking over as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I could also see it feeling similar to like uh, Scarecrow in 27, mm-hmm. uh, which was – you know, that was a great I, I, those- house. Yeah, oh my god, that was one of the scariest houses they've ever done. Yeah. Um, but I could see it feeling a lot like that because you know that very earthy um, design and very close quarters, uh, mm-hmm. very like it just feels dirty. You know what I mean? And yeah. I feel like that that pumpkin character design that they had in Twisted Tradition, if this is kind of an extrapolation of that zone, I feel like that's going to have a similar. Uh, design and um, aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. Yep. Agreed. It's going to be really good. 
Um, yeah, so moving around, we have the Puppet Theater Captive Audience, which we kind of touched a little bit on in episode one, but this is the house that we got a sneak peek of back in October 2022. Um, 2020. Yeah, I'm in the future, guys. I don't know. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta catch up. <laughs> How is it? How Are things better? No. Yeah. <laughs> Are we still wearing masks, Maddie? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, no. (laughs) Can we we cruise? (laughs) I have a lot of clients that would like to know that question. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. (laughs) Keep this all in, Lee. (laughs) Uh, Yes, please. Oh, Um, my goodness. Yeah. I finally watched that video. Uh, this morning, actually. And it was really good. I can't believe I didn't watch it before. But this ho- this house looks awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, puppets are creepy. So like, creepy. Like marionettes. There, Okay. There was a Criminal Minds episode where the, like, the person was kidnapping people and bringing them back to this, like, derelict theater that he owned. And in the seats where the audience sits, he had like all of these old dolls and stuffed animals. And he was like breaking the joints of, no one asked for this, but I'm gonna tell you anyways. He was was breaking the joints of the people he kidnapped and putting them up on strings like marionettes and like doing a show. It, oh, so well, from maybe that that's moment, what this house is based on because that sounds very much like yeah. the backstory of this. It's terrifying. Like from yeah. that moment on, I'd never been scared of marionettes before, but I was like, oh my God. That's, yeah, that's, that's creepy. That's almost exactly the backstory where like the the theater company gets trapped, like the the um the theater collapses and they're all trapped in there and they kind of go crazy. And so they start like killing the patrons and cutting up their body parts and making puppets out of them. Yeah. So it's kind of, yeah. (laughs) Creepy. It's going to be creepy. Love it. I bet it. I bet, I bet the theater's in Cary, Ohio. Oh my God. Probably. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. That's- With the Horror Nights backstories that they write, I, it's a it's a miracle that anyone lives in Cary, Ohio. Right? If if every single place you go has like some sort of crazy, you know, murdering happening, like why does anybody still live there? It's like that one town in Washington <laughs> that like twelve different famous serial killers are from. Yeah, you just got to shut it down. Yeah, no one's allowed to live here anymore. <laughs> like Chernobyl, <laughs> like, we're done. <laughs> shut her down. <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, uh, replacing Barney with a much more kid friendly attraction, uh, Universal is proud to announce The Haunting of Hill House. Um, (laughs) Great, great new replacement. (laughs) Oh, yeah. A day in the park with Hill House with with bent a day in the park with bent neck lady. Um, (laughs) Creepy. It's so good. Season two is scarier. I'm just saying. (sighs) You think so? I thought Bly Manor, like, oh, the lake lady was, I actually, okay, I had a nightmare about her last night, like last night, last night. So yes, I still think about her. <laughs> okay. You're, I think you're right. She is scarier than any of the ghosts in Hill House, but I thought, well, hold on. Let me get this out of the way first. Appearing on Netflix in October, 2018, <laughs> this series loosely is based on the 1959 book, The Haunting. Uh, by Shirley Jackson. The show follows five siblings through their paranormal experiences at Hill House, both in their childhood and adulthood. Um, This show, so I had always heard a lot about it. Obviously, it had a lot of hype when it came out. People were loving it. And Mm -hmm. I kept hearing about it. And a lot of times when stuff gets hyped like that, I just like will put it off. I'll be like, I know, I know I need to watch it. I'll get to it eventually. So I finally watched it when Bly Manor was getting ready to come out. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll start a week ahead of time. So I'll give myself enough time to finish it um, in time for Bly Manor. Uh, a week was more than enough time. I watched the whole show in one day and like basically in one sitting. Yeah, I, I loved it so much. It's just like a, an enthralling story. I, I, And I'm watching it knowing that it was on speculation maps for Horror Nights with the kind of the expectation in the back of my head, watching it for the first time of like, okay, how will this work as a haunted house? I can't wait to see if this is happening. I can't wait to see how that, how it happens. Mm -hmm. Like this show, there's so many good moments and good uh, visuals that they can pull and put in here. 
It's so good. I mean, just the show itself, it was one of those things where you were watching it and it was kind of like, um, oh my gosh, what's that one? The Wow. I, my brain just like is not working today. But it's <laughs> it's one of those things where like you, you don't understand like what's actually happening until the very end. And you're like, oh my God, this all makes sense. Okay. Like, right. like, okay, show came out a while ago, but like, like the fact that they're all what they're afraid of, like it's yeah. Yeah. And here's don't, the thing don't is give like, it away. Cause I'm going to no, watch no, it. No. I always, so I haven't seen it, but I always prep for HHN. So if I haven't watched something that's going to be featured, I will watch it. This one, I'm just going to have to watch in like the middle of the day on a Saturday yeah. when my whole family's home and I feel yeah. better. <laughs> yeah. Knowing, um, knowing your experience with scary stuff, Michelle, I definitely recommend watching this in the daylight with lights on mm-hmm. because I, I don't really get scared by horror movies or shows. Like I don't really, I always think I'm going to be, and then I'm not. Um, but this one doesn't really scare me, but it, it gave me a, a feeling of dread. Yeah, in, my, okay. in the pit of my stomach of like, See, oh I don't my get, God. I don't get scared when I'm watching the shows, but I always have nightmares. Always. Like, I don't even go to bed scared. I'm not like sneaking off to my room looking behind me, you know, as I walk down the stairs or anything. I just have terrible nightmares and I can't sleep for like two weeks. Yeah. <sighs> I'm such a um, wimp. <laughs> but man, this show, this show is great. I'm really happy. Also, this is just a good news if this is... Um, if this ends up being true and this is at Horror Nights, then this is the third time that Horror Nights is partnering up with Netflix um, after the two Stranger Things Stranger houses, things. which yeah. means that it's inevitable that eventually we'll get a house or scare zone based on Hubie Halloween, the Adam Sandler f- <laughs> film that came out last year, oh my gosh. <laughs> which is the best Halloween movie to come out since Hocus Pocus. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if Hubie funny. Halloween isn't at Horror Nights in the next five years, then what's even the point of all of this? <laughs> <laughs> I had such high expectations when I watched that movie. I was like, what is happening My here? expectations were met <laughs> and exceeded. <laughs> Oh I'm a, my goodness. I'm a, I'm a lifelong Adam Sandler apologist. I will always watch anything he does. Um, oh God. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I think this is a, a, a good sign in, in terms of that relationship uh, continuing. And I think that there's plenty of stuff on Netflix that they can mine both for Horror Nights and maybe for just the day park, you know, mm-hmm. like so much. Ne- Netflix is a good friend to have. For sure. There's a lot of good content on there. And please, I know that nobody else seems to love Stranger Things. The houses, I love them. Well, well And there's I a new know. season coming out. So please let there be another house next year. The first Stranger Things house, I don't remember there being a lot of negative uh, uh, reaction to that because I personally, like, I agree. I thought that first Stranger Things house was scarier, one, scarier than I expected it to be. Yeah. Especially, ba- especially based on the show. Not really being scary. I thought that the house definitely amped up the scares. For sure. And I thought that it it captured every moment mm-hmm. that you wanted to see. It was, was like walking there. through the set. It was so it was, good. Yeah. It was perfect. It was every moment you wanted to see, every set you wanted to walk through, mm-hmm. recreated exactly how you wanted it to yeah. be. And then the next year, I will agree, I really did not care for the house uh, for seasons two and three. Um, it was just too much it, too. It was way I, too much season two. Yes. And not enough season three. And I thought season three was better than season two. I personally. thought season three was the best out of the three. Yeah. I loved season three. So uh, I was really disappointed by the house. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed season four will be uh, better. And well, no, I, not the show was has been great. I think all along. Hopefully, if they do a house based on season four, it'll be more like the first house they did, which yeah. is great. Well, there's set photos that are out of season four, and it's, I mean, it's big. They're traveling like to so many different places and just, oh. yeah, like tentacles Love and it. trees kind of sets. So nice. It's going to be good. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. 
All right. Bringing up the rear, we have Beetlejuice, which we all know because we discussed that um, in depth on our last episode. So we won't go too much more into that right now. We pretty much knew this was a shoe in. Um, so mm-hmm. moving right along over next to the sh- in the Shrek Theater, actually, we have Creep Show. So we got a zone and a house. Not really sure if that's going to stick. What do you think? Or do you I think maybe one is going to be focused on the movie and one maybe focused on the series? Ooh, I think that's the answer. Okay. I think that if they were going to do anything like that, I think maybe the the house would be based on the two original movies. Um, and then maybe the zone is based on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be my guess. And this would also be the first time that a... a an IP gets the trick or treatment in the same year that it like both, both. things yeah. happen. Yeah. I thought that was um, interesting too, being at the same event like that. But right. if there's as much content as you say there is, then it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I would I could see it. Yeah. I mean, I personally would love to see one of them at least go away and it like whether it's the house or the scare zone and then we get something either original yeah. or something like that in place of one of those just because I think it is a lot like I haven't watched creep show yet which I obviously will to prep for HHN but it does like this year alone it looks like we had a we have a lot of overlap um whether it's like with like the horror icons and then the 30th anniversary and then the the scare zone mashup yeah and, so I think getting at least one other original or maybe IP in there in place of either the scare zone or the house, I think would be would be good. But I'm excited for so it either too. way. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. And this map, this is their first version for this year, and it does tend to change. Um, it right. doesn't change a lot. Like they've, they've been pretty accurate in the past, but yeah. I do yeah. expect well, it to change and, some. Yeah. Also, though, like a lot of – I mean, almost everything that's on the map has been there since last year's speculation map. Um, yeah. Really, the only thing that's changed is Creep Show, changed from Billie Eilish. Um, yeah. So, if anything's going to change, I think the only possibility would be Creep Show. Um, I mean, the logos that are on the map for all the house names look like they got them from somewhere. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. They they don't look like uh like fillers they look pretty official those logos yeah Um, but we know horror nights and like we saw it with uh 29 where they cut revenge of tooth fairy in place of us because they got that deal super last minute that could always happen again you know they're they have something in their back pocket and they're just waiting for that like final okay to do it and then they right. go they're ahead waiting and for Adam it. Sandler to say yes. Hubie Halloween oh is my gosh. coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, well, that would be the place for it in, in the comedy in the comedy house for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, oh my god. No, but yeah, I think I think I think it's interesting for Creep Show to be both. Um, I have seen some people online saying they kind of wish that there were bigger names for a 30th anniversary in terms of IPs. How do you feel about that? Do you think Creep Show is big enough for this? Do you think that it has the uh, the name recognition and the the I don't know the gravitas coming uh, from for a person a who's coming from a person who's not like a a big horror buff i'm gonna work on that guys i'm going to try to do my research and get better at (laughs) at actually watching (laughs) iconic horror films but coming from a person who's not um i would say no i wouldn't really know what creep show is honestly but then again my first year going in 25 didn't really have any big draws either that was a jack the clown year and like maddie said i was like who's jack (laughs) <laughs> you know well, yeah. 25 had insidious they had freddy versus jason i mean who's bigger than freddy and jason yeah but um still that wasn't like that wasn't the, the icon purge. you know like stranger well, things no, it wasn't. when stranger things was there that was like on everything and it drew in a huge new crowd of of followers right. so you know when well, for 25 the big the big icon on all the merchandise and everything was jack which yeah I didn't know True. who that was, but I still went. Yeah. 
glad. This but, year, yeah. if anything, I think Beetlejuice is going to be that that For IP sure. that gets people in the gate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. especially since they opened it last year only for those two days. So there's a lot of people that didn't get to experience it like they did Revenge of Tooth Fairy and Bride of Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and he's, I, I mean, yeah. he's a household name. He's been around forever. He's, you know, even before I ever saw the Beetlejuice movie, I, I used to watch the cartoon mm-hmm. on on Cartoon Network or whatever. And, and he's always been a part of Universal history as well like both parks whether it's here or hollywood he's always been walking around right so so people will just be glad to see him back Mm -hmm. i want to hear him say something about dominic toretto (laughs) i just want to know what he thinks about him (laughs) oh kenneth Oh, man. All right. And we are moving on. Moving on. on. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Um, (laughs) All right. So it looks like this year we're only going to see probably one show. Um, And this year that is going to be a Lagoon show, hopefully. Um, We're thinking probably Marathon of Mayhem 2.0, but it could honestly be something completely different. Uh, And either way, we are very excited and we are sure that the creative team is going to blow it out of the water. But um, (laughs) 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 yeah, I do. I do think it is smart, though, that they put in here that U rest station and fear factor because they already have that set up for the day, like for daytime Mm -hmm. hours. So to just keep that as a U rest station and not try and move it around to some other show. Like, I know everyone wants Bill and Ted back. I get it. But with everything going on in the world right now, we only have space for that one show. Because it's either, in my head, it's either the, like, Lagoon Show area is the U.S. station or the Fear Factor Stadium is the U.S. Mm. station. You know, it's it's one or the other. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's true. Or they could always put a U.S. station back in Kids Zone, couldn't they? Mm, um, no, because of the line. That's where the line. Yeah, go they through. have entrances to the houses over there. Three houses. Hmm. If I they, just, well, I really miss Academy of Villains like a lot. That yes. show, especially, I think the first year and the last year were my favorites. Um, obviously, the second year, the show wasn't what it was meant to be, and it's uh, you know nobody's fault that darn hurricane. Right, mm-hmm. right. Um, but the second the, year, oh my god! The Phenomenal. third year, when the first time they were in Fear Factor stage, I thought that they didn't. That show didn't really land for me. I felt like they didn't fully utilize the space, or I think they maybe tried to do too much with the space. They built those walls that would go out to the side, and the first time I watched the show, I was sitting way off to the side, and that those pieces of the set were literally blocking. The whole show, like I couldn't see the screen in the back. I couldn't see most of what the action was on stage. I was like, "Why? Why would they make this like this?" See, I've gotten lucky but, every time and been like right in the center stage, <laughs> and it's just it's incredible. Yeah, um, and I've recently um, went to uh, Universal and actually did the Animal Actors show, and I was curious as to how they were going to you know fill that stadium. But they do a good job at getting us in there quickly and keeping us socially distanced. So there's a way to use that stadium, the Fear Factor Stadium for an actual show. Um, but you're right. I don't know where else the Fear Factor, I mean, the the U rest area. Right. Mm-hmm. Go. Because right. you can't have you like the only reason they've never had really anything in the animal actors area is just because of those animals that they do keep in the back like a lot of the animals go home with people like the dogs and the cats and stuff but all of the birds and um things like that they all live back there so yeah. you can't have like people but i guess it could be a u-rest area because there's never like a ton of people in the u-rest area at once yeah potentially i don't know yeah. but regardless the lagoon show i'm excited about because marathon of mayhem so was- good amazing oh my god it's still my favorite thing i've ever seen yeah like favorite theme park show favorite nighttime show it's it's i i watch the video all the time uh my band has used 
things from the show as inspiration for <laughs> things that we do multiple times. We uh, we used the intro music, which is an excerpt from the score from The Wolfman uh, in 2010 by Danny Elfman. We've, we used that exact music as like our intro to our album release show that year. Um, <laughs> we awesome. did a cover of Hungry Like the Wolf because it was in the pre-show for... <laughs> marathon of mayhem like we that show is everything to me it's so um, good it was really good and, and do we know who's do we know who is working on that show this year because there has been of course a big uh changeover with um creative, creative. teams and things like that with furloughs so do we know who's on that True. show this year no, no clue. clue not cl- yeah mike Aiello, Aiello was the one that did it last year right yeah. or, i don't know that he did i think he might have already been were uh, moved over to Epic Universe because uh, uh, maybe maybe he was maybe he was I don't know but um, I know he directed uh, Cinematic Celebration that much okay, I do know so maybe that's yeah. what I'm thinking of but I don't know if he did Marathon of Mayhem what I do know is that I as soon as I saw Marathon of Mayhem and started thinking about wow like would they be able to pull off this good of a lagoon show again my immediate answer was no because obviously the show used the four big IPs that were in the event that year and used music from those which you cannot possibly have a better lineup of horror adjacent IPs with better music than Killer Clowns, Ghostbusters, and Stranger Things. Like, yeah. there's, you're, ju- you're just never going to get better than that. Um, so I, my expectations for this are going to be that it's not exactly like what we saw before because just not every IP has music yeah. associated with it that's that yeah. memorable, that iconic, and honestly, that, that slaps that hard. Yeah, um, the, the bar's <laughs> just been set so high, you're right. <laughs> I, mean, I will say, I think Beetlejuice clears yeah. the bar. I think Beetlejuice does clear the bar of, of iconic music that would get people hyped to hear mm-hmm. in a show like that. But other than that, I don't know that anything else has a theme song that is going to uh, strike a chord, pun intended, if, <laughs> you know, uh, that's going to, that's going to, you know, make people be like, Oh my God, I can't yeah. believe we're hearing this song this loud with this visual attached to it. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, what they could do though, since it is the 30th anniversary, they could just go back through everything they've ever done and pull from that, you know, like a, like an anniversary of the history of the event Lagoon show and not just sure. specifically this year alone. That's true. Yeah. I don't uh, know. Okay, so yeah. sorry to interrupt, but going back to my Mike Aiello thing, yes, he was. So on LinkedIn, it says, Michael led the creative teams in a permanent nighttime spectacle, Universal Cinematic Celebration, as well as the seasonal Halloween nighttime spectacular, Halloween Marathon of Mayhem. So <laughs> wow. thank you, you know, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna shake that man's hand. Yeah, I I, I thought I remembered knowing that, <laughs> but okay, that's funny. Uh, well, I'm glad you were right about it. Yeah, well, I'd like to give him credit because he was amazing. So I'm kind of hoping that he is also on this year's show because he's <clears throat> he's just Mister Halloween Horror Nights, you know. I'm, well, so- I'm pretty sure that he he like made a big announcement that he was kind of retiring from yeah. Horror Nights work because he was moving to be the director for entertainment at Epic Universe. Yeah, but then they um, brought him back over oh, did they? when they shut down the Epic Universe stuff. But now that Epic now Universe is on. opening back up, I wonder if he's back on it. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they brought him back to be like, hey, do a, another Lagoon show again. Right. Do another one. And then they're like, all right, now Epic's back. Go back over there. Right. <laughs> they're just... Well, they're just Anything the, anything the man touches is gold. So, you know, whatever his role is at HHN, it's it's going to be fabulous for sure. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Ah, well, all right. I think I think we've 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 covered everything in a somewhat timely manner. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I think we did great <laughs> considering how much content we had to cover. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big list. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that will do it for this episode of Rush of Fear. We hope you'll continue to join us on the run up to and during Halloween Horror Nights 30. For more content, be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rush of fear and follow us on Instagram at rush.of.fear. 
And again, a huge thank you to Corey Hall for creating our podcast artwork and to Burnt Ends for the music. We've had lots of compliments so far, and so, so much gratitude to all of you for that. So now, the podcast has come to an end. Now get out! <laughs> <laughs>